Hey y'all, my name is Yvette and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be recommending some books for the Latinexathon. The Latinexathon is a readathon that's focused on reading books by Latinx authors. It's running from September 15th to September 24th and for the full details make sure to check out my announcement video that I'll link down below. Similar to last year, my co-host and I have coordinated so we are all recommending different books and y'all will get as many different recommendations as possible. I'll link their videos down below as they're posted so make sure to check out those as well. I'll go ahead and link last year's recommendation videos as well because those recommendations still stand and they work for this year's challenges as well. The first book I'm going to be recommending is Sal and Gabby Break the Universe by Carlos Hernandez. The author of this book is Cuban and this would fulfill the challenges of Roots because the main character is bilingual and he speaks both English and Spanish during the book. This is a soft sci-fi middle grade book about a diabetic Cuban boy named Sal who has just moved to Miami. Sal is a magician of the sleight of hand variety and one of his classmates Gabby starts suspecting that there might be a little bit more to his magic act because he seems to be able to conjure things for real. Following an incident where a raw chicken appears in a bully's locker, Sal can't seem to stay out of trouble. This book is a five-star delight. It is fun and silly, but it's balanced out really well with heavy topics like grief, death, parental abuse, and bullying, and all that is done really, really well. Sal and Gabby are two of the most precious and kind characters. They have this hate to love friendship that develops over the book and they end up supporting each other through some really tough times and where this book really shines is through the characters and the character development. The second book I'm going to be recommending is Life is Wonderful, People are Terrific by Melissa Banales. The author of this book is Mexican and this would count for the challenge of Latinidad because the author is queer as well. This is a very short adult contemporary novel about a bisexual Chicana girl named Missy and her finding herself during her first year of college. It takes place in California in the 90s and Missy is trying very very hard to find a place where she belongs. She hops around different friend groups in different scenes like the punk rock scene and the riot girl scene and during all this she is also moonlighting as a stripper and abusing alcohol. Missy is quite possibly the biggest hot mess I've ever read. She is terrified of being rejected or being alone and that leads her to making a lot of mistakes that hurt not only herself but the people around her. But she deals with the consequences of her actions and she ends up learning from them. This book is all about a very imperfect person trying to find out who she is and and how she can be happy and I love it for that. However, I will say that if you're looking for some plot then this is probably not going to be the book for you because this is basically just Missy living her life. Content warnings for attempted sexual assault, drug and alcohol abuse, violence, and suicide. The next book I'm recommending is Ida Wild by Jude Sierra. The author is Brazilian and it would fulfill the challenge of heritage for that reason and also the challenge of Latinidad because the author is a queer woman as well. This is a queer romance about a restaurant owner, Asher, and one of his servers, Tyler. Asher's husband died in a car accident and ever since then he's let his restaurant kind of go down the tubes. And in a last ditch effort to save his restaurant, he hires an entirely new staff which Tyler is a part of. Tyler is a recent college grad who's trying to find out what he wants to do with his life. He and Asher become friends and then more and they help heal each other. This book is a beautiful friends to lovers trope and it also has discussions of race and privilege and gentrification and also Jeet Sierra is an author who never fails to write characters that I can connect to. And also Jeet Sierra is a poet so there is some beautiful writing in here as well. I do want to make a note about the representation because while Jeet Sierra is a queer cis woman, her characters are not. One of them is a queer cis man and the other one is black and genderqueer and it's not own voices for that representation. The next book I'm talking about is My Beloved World by Sonia Sotomayor and the author of this book is Puerto Rican and it would fulfill the challenge of roots because both Spanish and English are spoken within the book. This is a memoir from the first Latinx Supreme Justice. It spans from her early childhood to her being appointed to a federal judge. Sonia Sotomayor was diagnosed with diabetes at a very young age and between that and having an alcoholic father and a busy working mother, she realized pretty early on that she could only rely on herself. And with that, she does pretty well for herself. She goes to Princeton and then Yale Law School. She works for the New York DA for a while. She gets married and then divorced. She loses people she loves and I think ends up accomplishing a lot more than anyone expected from a Puerto Rican girl that grew up in a Bronx housing project. She has lived an incredible life and in this book she takes you through it. The part of this book that made me give it a solid 5 stars is where she talks about her college experience. 
I think first generation college students and kids of color will really see their experiences laid out in this book. Sotomayor goes from a predominantly Latinx community to a predominantly white one and she has to play catch up with all of her classmates that went to much better high schools than she did. She deals a lot with people not thinking that she deserves to be where she is despite all of her achievements because of affirmative action. If you like memoirs, I cannot recommend this one enough. The next and last book I'm going to be recommending is Pride by Evie Zaboy. The author of this book is Haitian and it would fulfill the challenges of heritage and voices. This book got a fair amount of hype when it was released last year, but in case you missed it, this is a Pride and Prejudice retelling set in modern day Brooklyn where all the characters are people of color. The main character, Zuri Benitez, starts to see the neighborhood that she loves becoming more and more gentrified. So when the wealthy Darcy family moves in across the street, she is not happy. She is even more not happy with one of the Darcy sons, Darius, who she sees as arrogant. However, her older sister starts having feelings for Darius's brother and she has to become okay with hanging out with Darius. And all the while this is happening, she's trying to figure out where she wants to go to college. While this is a retelling that hits all of those Pride and Prejudice beats that you would expect, I think it's a story that stands on its own feet as a solid and enjoyable YA contemporary. The writing is strong, the main character is flawed but you still want to root for her, and the setting is wonderfully updated to reflect its setting and themes of race, identity, and gentrification. So that is all the recommendations I have for y'all today, but make sure to check out my co-host videos. I hope y'all enjoyed this video, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.